Hey there, today I'm taking a look at the Zima board. Now this is a very interesting system that I got sent that essentially brands itself as the world's first hackable single board server. Now a bit grandiose of an introduction, but there are some very interesting ideas going on here. It is a very simple package though. It doesn't come with very much in terms of accessories or anything like that. There is a lot of flexibility to this little system. But actually taking it out of the box, we can take a look look at the actual system itself and you can see just how small it actually is. It really is just a single board computer that has a lot of very unique and interesting ideas going on here that make it a very viable option if you are looking for something to start a home lab with. Looking at the system itself, it is a very attractive design. You can see here in the side, one of the key features is the fact that it actually has a PCI 4X slot. We get the two ethernet ports. We do get some USBs and in the back, we do also get some SATA ports. In general, it is a very nice package. One of the key features of the system itself though, is that it actually comes with a custom OS called Casa OS. And really this actually interested me a lot. And we'll jump into look at that right now. So immediately you can see here that Casa OS's web UI is actually a extremely well-made one here. You can see that there is a wide assortment of apps available and they are extremely easy to install. Now this is the eight gigabyte version of this system that is the 832 model. In general, I think it's the one to go with. I really wouldn't go with any of the lower tiers just because you really compromise a lot in terms of the CPU and more specifically the RAM. Now the store that we have access to here doesn't have everything you could possibly imagine but it does have a wide assortment of stuff and a lot of the most popular things that you more than likely are going to be looking to use if you're just starting out if you're just trying to see if you're into the idea of hosting your own home lab if you're into self-hosting this is going to be an excellent starting point but i think that what people are missing is really the key feature of the system itself cost os is of course very functional and if you're just looking to learn how to do things you're gonna have more than enough headroom to start to learn start to practice start to really get down a lot of these systems and you can get really creative here especially since we do have a lot of expandability but as you use the system you start to realize that there are certain sacrifices that are made due to the fact that this is still an early gen product there are certain refinements that i would like to see done but i think that in one or two generations this could be an absolutely killer product and I'll explain to you exactly why. Casa OS certainly makes this a very interesting product, but there are other aspects of it that I think people are really not thinking about. It is the fact that this is, in spirit, very much a single board computer. If you've been someone that has been into the single board computer hobby, you know that a lot of the times these machines are meant to be tinker devices. You are playing around with them. You are doing crazy weird things with it. You're pushing the limits of what you can do because it is a learning device. And this, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, feels like a toy. And it is partially to do with this PCIe slot here, but it also is just along with the whole spirit of the device, it seems to be meant for you to just play around with. So really get creative with what you want to do, Specifically, if you're looking to test out different services, the expandability is janky. If you want to put in a SSD, a hard drive or anything like that, it's really all just put together in a way that doesn't feel perfect to use, but it feels like a tinkerer's device. If you're somebody that likes to just play around with things, you get enough expandability that you can get creative with what you want to test out. But there are certain limitations in the hardware that kind of keep this from being the perfect solution to things. Specifically, what I mean is that PCIe slot. Again, I keep saying it is great in terms of expandability, but you are limited to PCIe Gen 2.0 at 4x speed. So not exactly the fastest slot. If you want a server, you can use something like the GMK Tech G1 here. It will do a lot of the similar capabilities of this. You get a faster, newer CPU, and it's actually cheaper overall for the same amount of RAM. And another key feature is that you can actually use this as a desktop. The Zima board has a display out, but it is a mini display port 
and you're going to pretty much have to use an adapter and it does not include one. It really seems like they're pushing you towards just using this with Casa OS, which is a headless way of using it, which you can do with a mini PC. But as you can see, this is really just designed for you to have to manage yourself. There are cheaper alternatives for a lot of what this can do, but this can do a lot. It gives you just a way of tinkering with different things. It lets you test out things without having to deploy your entire home lab to test something out. It is pretty much a perfect test bed for any kind of PCIe devices as long as they don't need a large amount of bandwidth. And I am hoping that this is something that gets fixed later down the line, because in a lot of ways, it really has the spirit of a Raspberry Pi, something that is not the perfect solution to most of the things that you can do on there, but you can do a lot. And so that's why I really like the Zima board. It has that tinker energy to it where it's really just meant for you to just do whatever you want with it. I would like better documentation, especially in terms of the hardware that is in there. I really wish they would take a true approach to this whole hackability thing. It really seems to be a little bit more of a gimmick than anything else, but it does seem to have that home lab or spirit to it. And I really like the device. And I think that even if you already have a system System set up yourself a home lab going having one of these around it can be really nice just in terms of testing out new things where you don't need to shut everything else down or just do some drastic changes in general it really just seems like a fun toy to use and i don't mean that in an offensive way i'm not saying that it isn't capable of fulfilling the needs that you want but i think that there is more to it than just a cheap universal solution to a lot of people's needs but anyways, I'll catch you in the next one.